Welcome back. Today, how to create a culture where we can all coexist. Attorney, author, and game lifestyle advisor, JC Ellis, is back with some ways to examine our unconscious bias. Hey, JC. Hey, Molly. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Looking all bright and sunny in that yellow there. I love it. Thank you. So Absolutely. We're the two so let's talk a little bit about this topic. Why do you think that this is a good thing for us to chat about? What do people need to know? Well, with everything that's happening in the world right now, um, unconscious bias is real. And so the last time I did a segment, you mentioned unconscious bias, and I was talking about diversity and inclusion. And so I think unconscious bias is just that. It's unconscious. So we all have it. On the last segment, I talked about diversity being a spectrum and everybody has a place on the spectrum. And because of that, we all carry unconscious biases that we're not even aware of, right? So here's a perfect example. Two men walk into a business meeting, one older, one younger. There's a natural presumption that the older man is the boss. Same scenario, a man and a woman walk into the business meeting. For most of us, the presumption is that the man is the boss. So we base things, we make decisions based on our limited worldview and perspective. And so until we bust that bubble and widen it and, and allow other opportunities and things to permeate what we've always thought in our heads, we will always have unconscious bias. And I think being aware of it and maybe even acknowledging it sometimes brings us a lot closer together as people as we try to communicate <clears throat> and cooperate. Absolutely. And so that means that requires us to be mindful and to act with intention. And so we, we need to think about what we're saying, judgments that we're making, because not all bias is unconscious. There is some conscious bias where people know what they're saying and doing, and they do it deliberately. And so if we all take a step back and look at it, remember the last segment I did where I said you sometimes have to put on an uncomfortable pair of shoes to be empathetic instead of empacentric. And so if we're all working to be mindful of everything we think and say, we can eliminate some of the unconscious biases that we all experience. For instance, in, in your situation, you're a beautiful woman. We're both beautiful. We could be two of Char Charlie's angels, but a lot of people an unconscious bias that because we're attractive, we're not smart, as though the two are mutually exclusive. And you and I both know that's not true. We both know we're both <laughs> smart, right? Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Um, talk about microaggressions, if you would, because this is a term I've only, I would say, recently become aware of, maybe in the last year even or so. Yeah, and so a microaggression is something, again, that sometimes it's hard to know whether it's intentional or unintentional. So my daughter had a microaggression when she was in fifth grade, where one of her classmates and friends assumed she wasn't as smart as she was because my daughter was the only brown girl in the class. She was getting great grades. They were standing in line for a standardized test. My daughter had the C booklet. Her friend had the B booklet and said, oh, no wonder you get better grades. You get the easier test booklet. So my daughter went to the teacher and said, are these test book, is this the easier booklet? She said, no, they're scrambled, so you guys can't cheat. We have four different booklets. But her friend, even though they played together every day, just had this bias that you must get an easier booklet. That's how you're doing better. That would be considered a microaggression. Now, she was 10 years old, and so she probably didn't realize that was a microaggression. Another example, we lived in Memphis, and a, a, my other daughter, had we lived, they lived, she went to a school where she again was the only brown person in the school, so all of her friends were white. And she went to her friend's house, and the friend's mother said, You're so pretty for a black girl. Oh. And, yeah, exactly. And so it's like, how do you qualify pretty? Like, why can't I, why can't she just be pretty? Now, Blair didn't tell me this until many years later, because she probably knew I was gonna go Norma Ray had she told me <laughs> when she was 11 years old. But you know what I mean? So that's a microaggression, right? Or if you're interviewing someone and the person doesn't look like you, and the first thing you describe them as is, oh, she's so articulate. That's not microaggression, because the person probably has spent $200,000 or better on their education. Presumably, they're going to be articulate. And it's not a word that people often use to describe people that look like themselves. And so those are examples of microaggression. Interesting. And, and I think we all feel bad, especially if it's brought to our attention, if, if we've been someone who's offended someone in that way. So it's so important, I think, that awareness. And I wonder if just real quickly, you'll talk about the difference between equality and equity. 
Absolutely. So equality, let's say, for example, we all, we all have a right to walk into this building, right? Um, equity is when I walk in looking different than most of the people that are in the building, do I feel welcome? Again, what's the pond? Has the pond been neutralized so that everyone feels welcome, whether or not they look like the majority of the people that are in the pond or not? So taking a step back and thinking, you know, let's just use a disability. If I have a right to be in the building, but can I access the building? Are there ramps that make it available to me? Equality, right? Um, so it's 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 a lot. It's it's a it's way more than I can go into in the five minutes that we have. But again, it's about being mindful and really being thoughtful about things that you're saying, that we're all saying. I have biases. I know my husband does, my children do. It's not unique to white people being biased against black unconsciously and vice versa. So again, it's about mindfulness and just being thoughtful and really trying to be empathetic instead of empathetic. I appreciate the the open conversations that we've had with you on the show about all of these different topics, because as we learn things, I think we all can grow it, through our differences, which is wonderful. So thank you so much, JC. My pleasure, Molly. Good to see you. Good to see you too. All right. So again, JC Ellis has the A-Game Lifestyle Advisor to help people always bring their A-Game. She's written five books in the Black Diamond series, and you can find out more by visiting online.